Hello everyone and welcome to Civic Platform. This is your host Zuhair Al Musri. Today I'm covering an event titled with Discover Agriculture in the City. So today uh, we will have like a lot of information from uh, a farmer about their businesses and what kind of challenge and what kind of information they provide to our community. So let's find more information about this event from this new episode from Civic Platform. My name is Richard Laverne and I'm retired with Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada. I used to be the, um, the regional manager for communications and public affairs here. So I just retired last year, but I'm still with the committee for agriculture and agri-food, uh, the committee for the uh, Ag in the City. So it's a, a great event, a wonderful event. It's been going on for the past 17 to 20 years. I'm not exactly sure how long, but it's been a fair bit of time. And so we started it um, and we're continuing with it. So I, I'd love to be part of it again this year. It's really important to have, uh, Ag in the City really represents agriculture and what it does to the people in the, in the cities, urban audiences. One of the problems that when we first started was that uh, people didn't understand what agriculture was. Uh, and so it's really important to get the industry together and to sort of tell people that live in the city that don't see agriculture every day um, how important it is, like when you go to restaurants, when you, uh, the, the scientific developments in agriculture, uh, the new products that you have, that's all part of agriculture and part of what we want to showcase and highlight here today. Really the basic of, the, of, the, of today is that we want to make sure that people understand that agriculture is a big part of their lives. It's, it's something that, uh, that they, when they go home they can think about, when they, when they have food they go to the restaurant, when they go grocery shopping, and even when they see new developments um, that uh, in, in industry, uh, people can sort of understand that agriculture plays a huge part of it. Also, agriculture is a big driver of our economy. I think, I'm not sure what the numbers are, but there are billions of dollars of, of, of activity in Manitoba and uh, specifically for the city of Winnipeg or the cities in Manitoba. I think it's a great introduction to kids in terms of what agriculture is and what agriculture means to them. Uh, a lot of people don't understand where your food comes from, for instance. Uh, when you ask somebody, uh, you know, where does chicken come from or where do eggs come from, uh, a lot of kids say or think it comes from the grocery store and so that's not where it comes from. It, that's where it's sold and what we're trying to do is to educate people, kids, very specifically kids in terms of uh, where it comes from and who does, who does what and where eggs come from and canola and how your, your margarine is made and, and, and the milk is made and the cheese and, and so it uh, allows them to talk to the people from the industry and from the, from the uh, associations uh, what about, it tells them about their, their, their products and stuff. So. I think for agriculture, the challenge has always been the weather. It's always been, uh, you know, the, the farmers are, 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 are developing strategies in regards to what the weather is going to be like. So each year uh, that changes and so you don't know um, what to plant, for, for instance. Uh, uh, you go by what, what, is the, what the market is and you go by what the weather is going to be like and you, you're looking at that and, and that's the big challenge for farmers and for agriculture. Also, uh, in terms of uh, international trade, uh, we do a lot of trade in Manitoba in regards to our products that we sell across the world. Uh, potatoes, for instance, goes out in Mexico. There's a lot of potatoes that, that we grow that we, is sent to Mexico. So uh, there's international trade barriers sometimes that, that happens. Also, um, products uh, they develop diseases or, or, or there's things, things like that that, that can uh, affect the, 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 the production of, of, of food. Hi, my name is Sandra Dick and I'm a Manitoba egg farmer here. Um, today at Egg in the City we brought our booth along with all the other commodity groups here just to educate our consumers and the general public on where their food comes from and, our, and the practices we use to produce it. So it is a fact, I believe it's less than 2% of the Canadian population is 
has any connection to a farm or agriculture per, like practices. So these events are really, really important on teaching people where their food comes from um, and also to provide an opportunity for people to ask questions. Um, so here at Manitoba Egg Farmers, we have a booth here with um, some games to play, lots of recipes, um, and some free stuff too. So we're here to just uh, answer questions and have discussions about eggs and all their great properties. There is lots of challenges in agriculture. Um, it's different for each commodity group. For Manitoba egg farmers, um, we are actually continual all year and our, our, we don't have the same struggles that other um, crop farmers or berry farmers, um, a lot of the people here today would have struggles with, with weather and things like that. Our, our barns are controlled, um, the weather is controlled inside, so we have lighting, um, temperature control, humidity control, and so it's optimum um, for our hens at all times. So we don't have the same challenges that some would have. Our challenges are more related to um, supply, demand, trade, and all those other things. Yeah, this is a great event, and I'm very, very excited to participate in it. I think it's a great opportunity for people, for the public to come out, have conversations, engage with farmers, um, and ask those questions you have about where your food comes from. I'm here at Discover This agriculture in the city to um, let you know about farming. I want to tell you about what I do on my farm back in the country. So I want you to learn about your food and where it comes from and you can ask me any of these questions. I love your questions. I love to talk to you. I love to hear what you want to know from me because I know lots about chicken. I know about chickens. I know about what they eat. I know about what they drink. I know about why they are in barns. And so I just want you to come and ask me those questions. We have a wheel of chicken behind me right here. And it's just to give you an idea, a place to start with where to ask questions. And we've got, if you come see us, we've got prizes as well. But we want to see you, we want to talk to you and find out what you want to learn about chickens. So I'm a farmer in Canada and if you go outside right now, you'll see it is cold. So when it's so cold, we need to have our chickens in barns so that they're protected from the cold, they're protected from the cold, they're protected from predators and we can keep the environment just perfect for them. So that's a big issue we face farming in Canada. We have feed mills that provide just excellent feed for us, grain-based, so that is the same year round. Um, we have wonderful uh, support around us. The chickens is available year round because of these wonderful barns, and so then you can get your chicken for Christmas, you can get it for um, Thanksgiving, you can get Christmas for summer barbecues, chicken, 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 we love it. And you can have it from us, from me to you. So. A question I get a lot here at the booth is are you allowed to use hormones or steroids in chicken farming? And the answer is no. It has not been allowed since the 1960s. So when you get your chicken, you can know it is produced cleanly, it's fed a grain-based diet, it gets fresh water as much as it wants all day, and it actually has the barn and it can run wherever it wants all over that barn floor all the time. So we give them night too, just so they can rest a little bit. But other than that, food and water all day long, they have a comfortable place to grow. So my name is Jamie Gannett. I am here today with the Canadian Centre for Agri-Food Research and Health and Medicine, or CCARM. And I'm here as one of the clinical research scientists promoting our ongoing clinical studies over at CCARM. For us, it's very important to always be represented at Ag in the City because we do a lot of agriculture research. So we're always looking at nutrition and functional foods. A lot of time, those are Manitoba-grown functional foods, and we study their health benefits within uh, populations in Manitoba. So we love to come out to Ag in the City and interact with the public and share about what we're doing and all of the new research going on. I guess we're always looking for support uh, within agriculture because we want to make uh, agriculture, we want to make food readily available to everybody in Manitoba. Um, so food security within agriculture is very important to us and also ensuring that we have sustainable agriculture systems available. So making sure our weather um, you know, is cooperating with our growing seasons and that we are able to continuously produce the food that our population needs. 
So today we are promoting three of our active clinical studies that we are currently recruiting participants for. One is a consumer survey about protein. One is a consumer acceptability study on flax as part of um, a health claim. And for both of those studies, um, if anyone's interested, they can email studyinfo at sbrc.ca for more information. And we're also promoting one study that's looking at um, eggs that have been enriched with eye beneficial nutrients for improving vision in people with type 2 diabetes. So we're looking for um, adults that have type 2 diabetes that are currently taking medication for managing their glucose levels but are not taking insulin. Uh, and we ask them to attend four visits at the Asper Clinical Research Institute and we provide them with these enriched eggs. So if anyone's interested in learning more about that study, uh, we just ask that they contact us at either 204-258-1351 or at eggs 4 eyes 2020 at gmail.com. We're here at Discover Agriculture in the city uh, with lots of information for consumers. We want people to come and learn about where their food comes from, learn about what hog farmers in Manitoba do to care for their animals uh, and, and what we're doing for society. It's important for organizations like Manitoba Pork to be at events like Discover Egg in the City because it gives uh, the urban consumer the opportunity to come learn about where their food comes from. Most people are a few generations removed from farming. They don't. They might not know a farmer. So this is an opportunity to come talk to farmers, talk to organizations, and learn a little bit about where our food comes from. So we have lots of recipes, fun activities for kids, activity books. So uh, when we're at events like Discover Egg in the City, we always have something for everyone. Hi, I'm Trevor Sund. I'm a Manitoba beef producer. I'm uh, here representing Manitoba beef producers at the Egg in the City uh, program that's on today at the Forks. And I'm the District 9 rep, and which I live just north of the city, about 45 miles. And I run a moderate-sized cow-calf operation with my father and my children and my wife. And uh, came in here to represent the producers and meet people from the city and ask, answer questions that they have about beef production in Manitoba. Everybody's been asking a lot of questions about, like, how, how it is to keep cattle and interact with cattle like like the people were asking do you, do you keep them inside at all and like they're tough they, they can stay outside all winter long the minus 40 doesn't seem to bother them too much the humidity they don't like but uh, no it's been really great to an answer and interact with with the public at large to see what kind of questions they have and help them help them out so that they can gain the knowledge that they want. For, for the winter, the, the largest challenge would be if it gets to be high humidity. The amount of snow doesn't really bother us too much. If, if it gets excessive, we have to, have to start moving it and, and making space for the, the animals so that they don't, uh, they're not buried in it. But generally in Manitoba, we're not too bad. We don't get the, the 12 feet at a time like other places have been getting recently in the news that people have been seeing. Um, if, if people would like more information on beef and beef production in Manitoba, we have the website manitobambeef.ca and there's also guardiansofthegrassland.ca where they have some interactive stuff plus the, the short documentary movie Guardians of the Grassland where we uh, have it to promote and, and showcase what beef does for the environment at large. I think there's a, a, a lot of things that the, pe the newcomers can do in terms of, uh, of, of looking at the industry f that, that is in Canada. For instance, they, there's a lot of associations they, they can talk to. Uh, the Keystone Agricultural Producers is one of them where you can go there and get integrated or, or find out about what's happening here, especially CAP. Keystone Agricultural Producers is a, an organization that, that can help uh, people to uh, go through the agricultural industry in, in Manitoba or in Canada. So, and talk to people. I mean, that's, you know, that's a great forum for, for talking to people, going to events like such as Agriculture in the City, um, where you, you meet other people. There's a, Agriculture in the city is a really good event, but it takes a lot of work and there's a lot of uh, industry associations that are coming here and, and, it, and it, the commitment that they have to make to do this is really very important 
And so they they see it as being a, a very in, important uh, part of of agriculture is to make sure that people understand uh, what agriculture is and how it affects their lives. And newcomers can be part of that also in terms of uh, contributing not only to uh, Canadian agriculture, Manitoba agriculture, contributing what they know about agriculture and what they can sort of share with the rest of the farmers. And for instance, Keystone Agriculture Producers is, a, as an example, is a good organization to go to to, to talk about, uh, to talk to other farmers and stuff. And they can be on boards, they can go to boards, they can go to different associations uh, uh, and join with them and, and talk to them. I think it's really important to have the organization, the uh, agriculture in the city. This is, I think, is the uh, 18th or 19th year that the, this this event has been going on, and uh, and what we want people to understand is to to know how important agriculture is and how important it is to the farmers, but also to the people that are consumers, uh, urban consumers in, in, in agricultural products. It's, there's a lot of science that goes on into agriculture in terms of University of Manitoba, all universities uh, do a lot of research and there's a lot of, uh, a, a lot of uh, very big things going on with agriculture, developing new products and looking at the, the health of our products and the safety of the products and so uh, part of the agriculture jobs include scientists and, uh, and researchers in terms of uh, the, pro the food products that we use. We reach the end of our episode. Thank you for watching. If you like this episode, please like, share and subscribe and wait for a new episode from Civic Platform.